Hi, everyone. I am here today with Carla Paluja and Michelle Buell and Kristen Ward. And I am so excited to learn about today's topic. It is an introduction to jade egg practice and why it is important. Carla Paluja is a practitioner of energy medicine, Reiki master. Um, she's also a reflexologist, a private yoga instructor, and a recipient um, of the Mune Key Rites. Um, and it's only one of a, a few in the Pittsburgh area. And she is also certified in the healing art of acupressure. Uh, Michelle is a licensed massage therapist. She's been working for the last 10 years. Um, she has experience with chiropractors, physical therapists, and spas. She's very passionate about holistic therapies. And both Carla and Michelle run Red Tent Pittsburgh together. Uh, that Pittsburgh chapter is one of many chapters around the world. So I'll hand it over to both of you. I want to start out with a question first on what feminine well-being means to you and what it looks like to you. Hmm. Let me just take a moment with that um, with that question that really um, really hits home, especially um, right now. We're moving forward into this incredible divine feminine time in our lives where the women are really stepping forward and um, stepping into their sensuality, their sexuality in such a beautiful and gentle, gentle way. Um, so for me, that divine feminine aspect is this compassionate, sensual, sexual woman um, that is willing to show all sides of herself, uh, whether that be the powerful woman, the creatress, um, also the vulnerable woman. There's such, such beauty in vulnerability. And how when we drop into that vulnerability, how we really reveal our true, authentic self. And right now, that's, that's what we're doing. We're stepping into that and really allowing all preconceived ideas of who we thought we were dropping. We're dropping them all and we're stepping into just being ourselves. And... That could be incredibly sensual. It could be incredibly messy. Um, it has all these different connotations. And it's being able to walk through all that and allowing all our feelings out there, all our expressions out there, and just stepping into our authentic self. That is beautiful, Carla. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was a beautiful question. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely um, love the way that you put that, Carla. Um, to me, yeah, feminine wellness is is just so much of um, of how we 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 treat ourselves and our bodies. Um, how we connect to our our bodies and and our emotions and our feelings and um being able to yeah unapologetically let them out and express them in healthy ways and um to just love ourselves and each other and like Carla said be compassionate um just to have gentle strength and um just really connect in so many ways um, with each other and, like I said, with ourselves especially. That, to me, is wellness when you can connect to your, your mind, body, and soul. Thank you so much. <laughs> so and tell us a little bit about Red Tent, Pittsburgh. Mm, 
um, uh, our group is actually um, the Red Tent, a sacred gathering of women. And uh, for our particular group, we started about eight years ago. Um, this is our eighth year, actually. We'll be celebrating our eighth year coming up. Um, the Red Tent has always been from the beginning of time, but unfortunately, due to our society, we've really gotten away from our ancestral line and from ritual and from customs. And um, the Red Tent came to me um, really just because of my life and how I came into this world. And, um, you know, on a, on a very personal note, um, I came into this world um, at a time when the mothers went away. All the mothers that had children out of wedlock had to go away. And my... Um, my mother that gave me life was one of those moms that had to go away. And that creates an incredible disconnect from ourselves, from our bloodline, and ultimately from the mother. And I was finding that throughout my life I was looking for connection. Um, and through looking for connection, it's almost as if what you seek is seeking you. And all of a sudden, red tents came up. And I found a teacher in Australia to help teach me how to facilitate women's groups. Um, from growing up and being having that disconnection between um, my birth family from my mother and my father, it created a disconnection through the masculine and through the feminine. Um, so I was always seeking connection, and it was really hard for me. I preferred to connect with men more than I wanted to connect with women, but yet I kept finding myself thrown into these situations with women all the time, like all of a sudden I'm belly dancing, like where is that coming from? And like it was all these different things just like pouring into my life that my soul needed, my spirit needed, my body needed to help me to understand it and to come home to these red tents. And then all of a sudden, the red tent is just, it's a gathering of women, but it's also helping me bring me back to me, as well as creating a sacred space for women to share. And we meet at the new moon every month because it, it's during the new moon that women naturally, we go within. You know, we follow the moon. We're in sync with her. So we take this inward introspection. And that's the time when women most need that support. And if you lived back in, in ancient times in your villages and in your tribe, you would have met in a quote-unquote red tent where women would go to bleed each month. And it would be women of all ages. And that would be where women would learn how to thrive as women. There wouldn't be any competition. And the young girls in the tribe would learn from each woman different facets of what it was to be a woman and how to step into her femininity and her sexuality. Um, so no matter what decade of life you were in, you have something to add to this tent. And in this tent, these women would help the younger women, and the young women help the older women. And it's this beautiful community. And in ancient times past, we would have gathered in our tents and then come out of our tents. And the insights and the introspection that happened during the tent they would then share with the men, and the tribes overall would thrive. And there would be this incredible balance of masculine and feminine truly working together and this incredible balance and unity so that a community can totally thrive. Back in ancient times, the best way to destroy a tribe would be to take out the tent. That's the heart of the 
community. So in the red tent, that's what we're doing. We're bringing women back to themselves so then they can take it out into their community. So then as a community, we can all thrive. We can thrive as women, we can thrive as men, and we can thrive as an entire community. Yeah. So we meet every month, and each month has a different um, focus on it. Um, The women actually, it's their tent, so they determine what the content is during a tent. You know, it's amazing how it all works out. I just kind of like sit back and facilitate it and hold the space for it. But it's the women through their sharing of what's in their heart and what's in their soul that really determines the direction that the tent will go. And we have, currently we have a beautiful group of women. Our youngest member is six. And we have women well into their 70s. And it's this beautiful sense of community that is absolutely unbelievable, just amazing. Um, so it has brought such joy um, to my life, as I'm sure it has in turn for them, because it's every time we meet in a tent, nobody wants to go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tents go on for hours and hours and, you know, weekends and we've gone on trips. We just recently came back from Mexico. We went there in December um, visiting sacred sites. So it's really a beautiful community that keeps keeps growing and we keep connecting with other tents around the world. Yeah. So it's beautiful. Wow. Thank you so much for the work that you do, both of you. Oh, we love it. Yeah, we love it. We love gathering with women, yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell us about this jade egg practice. Mm. So why don't we start off with that? (laughs) So, yeah, so the the jade eggs are also um, referred to as yoni eggs, um, and they're made of gemstones. um, Of all different kinds, now, traditionally, they were um, jade so that's why you'll hear jade eggs. But now they come in all different um, gemstone uh, types. And um, it's, a, it's really a beautiful practice to, to connect to yourself and um, to, you know, strengthen the muscles, but really just to, to connect in a deeper way. Um, there's really so many different benefits to the jade egg practice um, that will we'll talk about a little bit today. And what's the what is the practice? Like what is the process involved with the gemstone? Mm, the gemstones actually um there's a lot of different things there. The gemstones correlate with different healing properties. Um if you were looking to really connecting with yourself and learning to love yourself, you might want to use a rose quartz egg. You know, rose quartz is all encompassing, which Michelle has. It's all encompassing. It's all about love. And you would actually utilize that particular egg to help to bring you into that loving space and truly being able to accept you as you. Up stones, um, like obsidian, it's more grounding and it brings you like really into your body. Um, it also helps to like bring you into pleasure or a jade egg, like a nephrite jade. Um, that, that is a beautiful stone, which is really what I mostly use at this particular time. Um, this particular stone really helps with any traumas that have occurred in your life. And it really helps you to be able to release those traumas and at the same time centers you, grounds you. It brings calmness um, to the body, and it really um, enables you to see yourself as this truly sacred being. And does it involve, like, holding it and meditating on it, or, like, what do you do with it? Hmm. That's... And we'll, we'll, t- we'll each share our stories on this, because each of us has this unique story with the eggs, um, and I'll let Michelle share hers first, but before she begins, um, you know, it is best to hold that egg, get to know that egg, um, 
really meditate with it for for a little while and you really when you begin to use it when you feel like your body is ready it's always a beautiful practice to really come into yourself and really ask yourself and ask the yoni like are you willing to accept this because with the egg you are inserting it inside you and you can do a simple breathing practice with it to get all the muscles to activate. Um, you can take it into all different types of meditative practices with it. Um, and, you know, you would like inhale and bring the egg up and exhale it out. So it's, it's a beautiful practice. And I'll let Michelle share her experience with, with the egg. <laughs> and how she first began with it. Because it's always unique. Each individual is a unique process. So I was first introduced to um, the jade egg in a red tent, actually. And um, I was immediately enthralled by it. I've always loved you know, gemstones and the different properties. And I just thought they were you know, just beautiful, for starters. They're just you know, they call to you, they're just gorgeous. Um, uh, I know you can't really, I mean, maybe you can see it a little bit. This is the rose quartz one. And um, it's just so much detail to these beautiful crystals. But um, I just was really drawn to the practice of connecting with with myself um, and my yoni um, because I was pretty disconnected, as a lot of women are. And... Um, just the relationship I had to myself, I, I wanted to strengthen. And so um, I purchased <laughs> I purchased my first one on Amazon. And I brought that, I have this one here because I like to always show the, the difference. Like, so this is the one I got on Amazon, and it's jade, jade egg. <laughs> like, you can tell <laughs> how different it looks. And even the feel of it. Um, it's, it's, um, I don't want to say coarse, but it's, uh, it's just not as smooth and soft and the color, it, it doesn't, it almost looks like marble instead of like, a, like a gemstone. And so that kind of threw me off because, you know, I was really excited. I ordered it and then I sat with it for a while and it just, something was off about it. I wasn't, um, I wasn't ready to to actually insert it because I just felt something felt off. And then um, eventually I did, I, I like sat with it for actually, I want to say like two or more months before um, like I sat with it, meditated with it, you know, and just tried to connect to it. Um, and then finally I invited um, the insertion and um, it still just felt, Felt off, you know, and this was with the Amazon one, like I said. Um, and then I had purchased a, a GIA certified gemstone yoni, which is the, I have the rose quartz and I have obsidian. Um, I purchased the rose quartz first, and just the, the look of it in general, like it's so, it, this is a gemstone. And the GIA certified means that it, um, it's it's certified and it ensures that the egg is safe. It ensures that it's pure and authentic and that it hasn't been heated or dyed or um, altered in any way. And they're all tested for authenticity. So, like, getting a GIA certified egg is very important. And, you know, it's smoother and, and just it, it feels you connect with it so much more. And when I started using um, this rose quartz egg, I mean, it was just such a profound connection that I that I gained um, with myself. And so I know everybody's heard of like Kegels, Kegels, however you pronounce it. Um, everybody pronounces it differently, it seems. But um, I always, you know, tried to practice my my Kegels and. Um, you know, I could feel the connection to my pelvic floor, but not as much as when I use the jade egg, it or the yoni egg, it um 
you can really feel it inside and if you connect with your core, you connect with your pelvis, you connect with your yoni, you connect with that pelvic floor, all those muscles, like it it just really brings you into your body and really just connects you in ways that um nothing nothing else really had for me before. But it took me a while to get there till I was again comfortable with um with inserting it. Um but it's been a beautiful practice and I'm really glad that I was introduced to it in the red tent and now I've done a bunch of um continuing meditation classes and things like that for the eggs um in being able to like teach them and and uh and do meditations with them and things like that. So it's been really great. Yeah, my uh, my situation was somewhat similar. Um, I've been practicing, doing a J-Day practice for about six years now. Um, prior to that, I had um, done a lot of different tantric practices, so I had been aware of it for quite some time, but never had the courage <laughs> to actually work with the jade egg. Um, so for myself, I started out with the nephrite jade because I experienced a lot of trauma um, in my very early years and felt that that particular stone um, would be very beneficial for me. Um, and again, I, geez, I sat with mine for the longest time. I couldn't even tell you how long before I actually picked it picked it up. And once I picked it up, I had to sit with it, hold it, put it on an altar, work with it in that way, meditate with it. Um, there were times when I would just lay there in a meditation and just rest it onto my navel and just like come to the space where I could allow for it to help me to heal. I felt I really had a lot of healing that was absolutely necessary. Um, in growing up, there was a lot of disconnection with the body. Um, because I, I was brought up Catholic, so there's, there's a lot of guilt in, um, you know, you don't do that naughty thing ever, and you don't ever touch yourself. And um, so I had a lot of, Free conditioning and belief systems that I had to work through before I can actually follow through with the jade egg practice. And so it took me a long time to like sit and meditate with it until my body was able to say, yes, I will accept this. And I think that's the key part to it. You know, we're told that um, pleasure is not something for us. And I know the way I was brought up, um, pleasure wasn't an option. It was a duty. <laughs> um, so I had a lot of that, that conditioning to actually work through. And once I was able to like work with it and start doing the practices and just breathing, um, it was amazing that how my pelvic floor started to come alive. You know, when we experience a lot of trauma throughout our lives, there's this numbness that occurs. And for as much as I worked with a tantric practice um, and enjoyed um, my sex life, there was still this disconnection going on and, and an occasional numbness, like just plain outright numbness. And, you know, at that time I had no idea that, Numbness is a thing. Like, I just thought it was numb and you couldn't do anything about that. Um, but, you know, numbness is, is a step in your healing, just acknowledging the fact that, wait, I'm numb, and then coming to the understanding of why that numbness occurs. You know, it occurs through how we choose to give birth. Um, you know, our belief systems, what have you, the traumas that happened. So for me, this practice has become a truly healing practice for me and my sexuality and how I view sex and sexuality and, and in turn how I view pleasure. 
like I had no idea that I had such a disconnection with pleasure. And um, this past, last year, last summer, I had a, a beautiful opportunity that I could actually take this practice into a tantric retreat. And um, it was an amazing practice with 50 other women. And wow, the power in that to do this particular practice with 50 other women in a room was absolutely amazing. And I remember at one point, literally, at the end of my week, standing in the shala and looking around at all these women, thinking, wow, this is why they burned us. Like, this is powerful. Like, this is what women do when they really embrace their sexuality and don't look at it as, like, a dirty thing. Like, this is the most beautiful. Our bodies are amazing and they're beautiful and we we can experience such such pleasure if we just allow ourselves and it's through this practice that we're able to really connect with ourselves connect with our pleasure connect with our sexuality and in turn connect with the universe and connect with others you know you how difficult is it to really, truly give yourself 100% to another being until you're willing to give your own self that 100%? So, um, you know, for me, it's just been an incredible practice, but it's been a process, you know, a six-year process. And I can say in these six years, I don't, I wouldn't consider myself an expert I'm still learning, and that's the exciting part of it as well, too. You're constantly learning. You're constantly growing. It's kind of like peeling away in an onion, and you just peel away at little little different layers. You know, it's, it's, it's really a beautiful practice, really a beautiful practice. So I'm fortunate to um, have it in my life and to be able to introduce it into the tent as well. And did you say um, thank you so much, Carla? That, you that's just thank you for sharing your deep process and journey. And you know, trying to kind of get into that into the physical body, it's hard for some people. Um, <laughs> and, and and then it's like, well, where are you? Uh, somewhere else. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Uh, Michelle, did you say you were going to tell us something about the process? I mean, I'm I'm actually just really curious about like um, it, you insert it into the vagina, and do you like breathe with it for a while? Do you do like pelvic exercises while you hold it in? Um, all of the above. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can. Um, I was just imagining. <laughs> Right, right. There's a there's a lot of um of different things that you can uh use the jade egg for. Um it's it's kind of one of those things like the sky's the limit. Like we're still constantly learning, you know, all these new amazing practices that you can do with the jade egg. Um and but yeah, like at at first it's it's best to just connect with with yourself, you know, and, and once you're ready that's when you um you add in those breathing practices um you add in those you know muscle training processes like you can really strengthen there's 26 muscles of the pelvic floor that you can work with and train like with the egg itself and um and they have a lot of them have holes drilled into them maybe this one there's holes drilled in can you see the holes mhm mm and then you can use um like this is uh un it's dental floss, but it's like not scented or flavored, it's organic. Um so you would use that and string it through and you can actually do like weight lifting exercises like with it. There's just, there's so much that you can do. And in each so they come in different um gemstone types. As Carla was saying, and um, there are four different things. Like, I would not use my rose quartz for like deep, deep breathing. 
um, a more like yang type breathing, like like fast breathing, it would be more of like a slow connected breath. Um, because the property of the gemstone itself, it, that's what it's made for. You can crack it, actually, um, if you use the wrong gem, gemstone for the wrong practice. So that's why I also have um, the obsidian for, you know, and also for the different properties that it offers as well. But this is for, like, more of my, like, weightlifting properties and more of, like, the deeper breathing properties. So, um the type of gemstone that you get, you definitely um, want to take into account what type of practice you're looking for. And have you talked to any other women who have um, also worked with Jade? Uh, yes, right now, uh, Michelle and I are enrolled in this um, program by uh, Lila Martin, um, Sex, Love, and Relationships coaching certification program and um, we now have the opportunity with 275 women from around the world in doing this practice and we do live practices through um, a conferencing network just like this where it's different women from all over the world and we'll do jade egg practice, we'll do breathing practices, meditation practices, where we're all holding space for each other and doing this practice. Yeah, it's it's really beautiful. And when I was in um, Mexico, um, there was 50 of us live in the middle of the rainforest in Ashala. And every day it was... Um, except for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you were breathing and you were doing ritual and you were doing practices that really helped you to connect with you and connect with other women. You know, I was telling the girls from the tent when I went to this particular retreat as part of our course, um, I got onto the plane in Pittsburgh it's Carla Plua, myself, very strong, very, like, confident, that gentle little warrior. And when I got off the plane in Mexico, my little wounded girl sheepishly got off that plane. And when I stepped onto the grounds of the retreat center, I was like wide-eyed and I wanted, I immediately went back to that shy little girl that I was and thought if my mother was there, I would have like hid behind her legs. Like I just wanted to like crawl, like somebody, how am I going to get through this week? Like somebody get me through. And, you know, that's part of this practice. Like it allows you to see those shadow aspects of yourself and learn to love them. And that week, I got to love that scared little girl and really embrace her. In my first practice, I had um, one of my mentors come up behind me because I was really struggling through the practice, and she came up from behind me, and she just scooped me up in a hug and just held me and held on to my heart, and I held on to her heart, and we just sat there, and we just rocked. And we just rocked. And that's what this practice does. It helps you come home and just love you for everything that you've been through. Because no matter what, you might be that scared little girl today, but there's also that incredible warrior that's there as well, too. So you learn to love yourself wholly. Yeah. I do remember you going to Mexico. Um, so did you do this all week? All week long, morning, noon, wow. and night. It got it got to the point. It was like the final day, and I was just like, I don't want to breathe anymore. I don't want to breathe. Not again. I don't want to see anything. Like everybody, just like leave me alone. I just wanted to like run and hide because they literally took us into every practice. Like you got to do a wild practice, like in the ocean on rocks. We're all climbing all over these rocks and doing this this really this sex magic practice um, in the ocean. Like it was absolutely 
absolutely amazing. Um, the process that it took you through. And you can see, like, each and every one of us, out of the 50 women from all over the world, um, you would see this ebb and flow happen where some women would be, like, so expansive and so vibrant, like, oh, that was such a great practice. And then there would be others, and we would be like, oh, boy. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to look at anybody because I just saw something that I, I don't even know what this is. And then the next day, all of a sudden, they would be like, oh, I'm on top of the world. And then you'd be right back down. So, and that's what this practice does. But that, that's the beauty of a woman. We are all these things. And to really, truly love yourself and really feel that bliss and that joy, it's about embracing all of it. And when you have a group of women together in this practice together, it I can't tell you how many times I was brought to tears and how many times in the tent that we are all brought to tears just by witnessing each other and being with each other and just being and just being in our hearts and in our body and being able to express ourselves freely. And so this week was part of the training that you've been doing? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. So um, where, can you get, like, where do you buy the stones? I think you mentioned, was it Amazon that you could buy the jade eggs? Well, that's where where you don't want to buy it. <laughs> 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 because okay. Anywhere that you buy them, you want to make sure that they're GIA certified. GIA certified, right. Okay. Yeah. And we on our website, um, soul to soul, S O U L to S O L E T G H dot com, we have a store where you can actually purchase the GIA certified eggs. Oh great. So you That's can get them wonderful. right online yeah. through through us and yeah, yeah. And you'll they it's beautiful. Like they come in a beautiful discreet like the package is really, really beautiful. Michelle, do you have it? Yay. Yeah, so you want to talk about the package while you have it? Like Michelle's totally prepared here. She's like, Whoa, she's you're like damn <laughs> away. <laughs> so they come yeah, this nice little box and they have um this is the little pouch that you can keep them in and it's like cushioned to protect. And your little egg comes in there, and it's like a little like, comb for your egg, and you can put it in your, I like to put it in my purse, you know, or whatever. <laughs> and um, then it also comes, and the the website, too, that, um, that goes, like, the store that we have on our website has a, a website attached to it, uh, Gemstone Yoni, and they have a lot of amazing information, but it also comes with this little pamphlet of information. And um, which which I love. It talks about Kegels, Yoni Yoga, Yoga Breathing, Yoni Touch. It gives you just like a little sample of everything to kind of, uh, you know, it even gives you a little a little map too. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it gives yeah. you like the, the how to. Um, you know, a little bit of brief information on, you know, how to care yeah, for it. Yeah, it's a nice example, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is nice. Because um, when you get something and it doesn't come with, like, any instructions, even if you know about, you know, or you learned about it or whatever, it's kind of like, okay. <laughs> so this is nice <laughs> to be able to have this nice little kit, you know, that it comes with. And um, it's just really inviting and, and it's, it's just makes it seem that much more sacred. I mean, it even says sacred nourishment on it. Like, oh just, wow! Yeah, it's just such a beautiful little package that it comes in. We really like fell in love with this company for how passionate they are, and yeah, all the information that they provide, and the fact that they really put a lot of care into you know these these stones. They're actually they're they're hand carved eh? Like, they have a little machine, and they're all, like, it even has pictures of that process on the site, too. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really cool. Um, so if you're somebody that, like, likes to have all the information about, you know, all the things 
involved. Um, this is a great company that provides it all there for you from from like the way that the stones look before they're tumbled and processed to the way that they look after, where they get them, all of that. It's all there. So I have yeah, a question. Think, Can you mm -hmm. use the jade eggs for other purposes also? Like what type what type of purposes? Like Um I guess yeah, well, I mean just to like you had talked about sitting with them and meditating with them and mm -hmm. so forth. Just for that, um, because in my astrology, I'm trying to incorporate more work with gemstones where I prescribe uh, a couple gemstones to someone based on their birth chart. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking, you know, these are great. Um, and also the shape of it is great because depending on the shape of how gemstones are carved, they emit a certain energy. Right. Yeah, and this is very feminine. It's, it's the cosmic yeah. egg that you're inserting in, inside of you. So, yeah. yeah and you and can it's, it's, yeah, that. it's really nice into the hand. And there are times where I do breath work and meditation with it just like lying on my chest or it on my stomach or outside of, you know, my, my womb just to, to feel that connection with the gemstone and with its properties and, and um, that loving energy. So definitely, yeah, you can, again, the sky's the limit. Like, there's really nothing you can't do but these babies. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think something important to note, too, um, that if you lived in France after childbirth, you would have been given a jade egg. And that would be part of your recuperation process. Like after really? your two weeks, yeah, mm -hmm. you would be, because that helps the pelvic floor. Because um, those of us that choose to give birth, um, the pelvic floor weakens. So it, it thins and it, you know, it starts to weaken for us and the bladder can start to drop, you know. Um, so this actually helps with that. Like it's an amazing practice for young girls to do because it helps them connect and it could eliminate PMS because you're connecting with you and your sex sexuality at a very young age, which is so important. And, and you're working with those muscles too that tend to contract and act up during like cramping and everything. So you're connecting with those muscles and helping them soften and really, you know, creating that because it's like, like a hammock, that pelvic floor. So um, when when it cramps up, you know, like in any muscle, it just like pulsates and it you know hurts. But if you're working with it, you're going to be able to you know, just keep off with it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. it's like you know the hammock literally is like forward and back. You know that's what allows your pelvis to tilt. And if those muscles within your pelvic floor are not functioning properly, your low back's not going to function properly, your low belly, your hamstrings, your quads, your hip flexors, like it's all connected and it's intertwined. And for women that give birth, um, if you have a C-section, it's disturbing all the muscles within your low abs and you can lose connection. And for those that are able to give birth naturally, um, when they cut, you're to tear. You're to tear naturally. Like, it naturally tears. But in the Western world, they cut. And when it's cut, you literally, that's where the numbness comes in because the scar tissue begins to build. And Michelle can talk a little bit about the scar tissue because she works a lot with scar tissue release. Yeah, so um, I actually had a child, and, and through my process um, of labor and delivery, they, they gave me the episiotomy and um, cut me so that I wouldn't care. Um, but in that process, um, it created, yeah, that scar tissue. And it, the scar tissue just, I mean, sometimes it can be painful. Um, sometimes it can create numbness. Sometimes it just... It, it, for a long time, I just felt it. I still sometimes do. I feel like um, the more I've been working with it, the, the less I'm affected by it. But, yeah, scar tissue can cause immense pain. I mean, it can, again, like Carla was saying, it can radiate. It radiates in the back body, in the front body. Um, some of the 
the sensation is lost too with scar tissue. So in breaking up scar tissue, it softens everything and um, and really helps movement. Um, it helps again get that sensation back. Um, yeah, the, there's a lot of different um, ways to 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 break up scar tissue that just aren't talked about. I mean, in anywhere in the body too. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty. Uh, it's it's more like people don't talk about it. Like there are episiotomy scars and things like that. even their um their uh, cesarean scars. Like there there's a lot of pain that comes with that. And, and over time too, this could be something that maybe you have had this scar for 20 or more years, and you're still having issues with it. Um, yeah, myself, I my first child was a C-section. Um, my second child, um, I was able to do uh, a VBAC, which at, at that time was absolutely unheard of. But I was so determined because there was no way in hell I was going to have another C-section. Um, and now today, 27 years later, um, Michelle just recently helped me. Like it, it causes so much pain um, because it's so inter intertwined and it, it's been hard to like keep that broken up and it binds up. And as a result, because it was cut, it's, you lose connection with the muscles. So I have to work even harder with my uh, low abs. Not only that, but from that scarring, it creates a flap, which mm -hmm. for sanitary reasons is not good either. You know, it, it's it's not good to have that flap. So we keep working to keep that connected and to, to keep that open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and that's where the J Day practice comes with that too. Like that really helps to like open all that up because we have a tendency to grip. You know, when we've gone right. through all these operations, so this really helps us to to open up. Yeah. As soon as um, I noticed, as soon as as I started working with the J Day and and inserting it. Um, I noticed immediately my posture just improved, and I, I stand taller, and and my pelvis, I have a, a um, anterior pelvic tilt, so I, it's like my butt will stick out more, and um, as soon as I put that egg in, it corrects it for me just naturally, um, because I'm engaging those muscles that I'm not normally paying attention to or connected with. So it's it really helps to engage those. I mean, like I said, the not even just the pelvic floor muscles, but your pelvis itself, your lower back, your lower abdominal muscles, and you don't even realize it until you insert it and feel that like whoa, like I, and it does it like lifts your heart up too, and you just feel like empowered and just more in your body. Uh, it really connects you because there's muscles. Again, there's 26 of them. <laughs> there's a lot there. And, I mean, that we're just not paying attention to. Yeah, we're yeah, not going to muscle work those out with a typical routine on the elliptical. <laughs> um, right, exactly. Right. And the unique thing about these muscles is they come together from either side. So a group of them come together from either side of your pelvic floor, and then they meet from the back, yeah. This way. Mm -hmm. And then they move in a figure eight as well, too. So it's this incredible, unique group of muscles that all work together. And once you do this practice, um, it really helps to rejuvenate the entire body and bring vitality to the body. Not only vitality back to your pelvic floor, but vitality to the whole body as a whole, um, which is very, very important. Do you know if this can help with other reproductive type of issues? Because, uh, I mean, I, I have I have had a history of endometriosis um, mm -hmm. Very painful, um, but I found a lot of healing from acupuncture. But uh, like with fibroids also or cysts or anything, do you know if that helps? Yes, it's a very healing practice. 
um, okay. for especially endometriosis. Absolutely. Um, it's very healing because it's also, you know, a lot of people mistake a tantric practice for dirty, filthy sex. And that's not what it is. Yeah. It's yeah. just beautiful. For Kama Sutra, really. They, they're kind of yeah, like, yeah. They're, they're mixing Kama Sutra with Tantra, and it's really all about breath work and connecting with you and your partner when you wish to connect with your partner. Um, so it's a well, lot of breath yourself. work. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of breath work and a lot of introspection and a lot of bringing healing um, into into uh, that particular area. So yeah, we have found there's and there's a lot of scientific evidence that states that this is a very healing practice. But unfortunately, because of our own ideas of sex and sexuality, we mistakenly have a lot of doctors that say, "Oh, don't do that." Well, what's the difference? Are you going to insert an egg or what else are you going to insert into the vagina? We've inserted ridiculous things into the vagina. We don't think anything of inserting a, a bleach-infused tampon downloaded with numerous chemicals, altering the chemical balance of the body, but yet we're going to say that, oh, don't, don't do that egg, that's dangerous. It's, it's not so. So there, there's a lot of um, misunderstanding um, right. Another with, common misconception is that it'll get lost. Yeah. Oh. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what a lot of people will, will I was ask wondering them. about that. <laughs> huh? Yeah, that's what, it's a common question you get. Like, where did you lost in there? And it's like, well, again, and this is where learning about, like, the female anatomy in our reproductive system, um, there's a block there. Like, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> Like with a tampon, a tampon can't go anywhere. Right. No, right. You, you can't your go cervix yeah. is right. Yeah, your cervix is right there. So all throughout the month, and we, I actually have this beautiful video. I'm going to have to share it at some point, but a beautiful video of your cervix throughout the month and how it shifts and alters each and every day of the month during your cycle. Yeah, so it's amazing. Oh. Like your cervix is right there. It's going nowhere. Yeah, and 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 really like it again. Like how I was mentioning, how you can use the string. So if you're worried about, you know, getting it stuck up there or not being able to, you know, lay your egg <laughs> on your own, you can use the string and just pull it right out like you would a tampon. So you really, um, you know, you don't have to worry about it. Like some people like to start off using the string until they're more comfortable. And then you don't you don't need it. It's you don't yeah you don't need it at all. But like I think it's because we were just we grew up with tampons, you know, and and it makes us wor worried that you know once something's up there, how do we get it back down? But once you work with that egg too, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Like it's just being able to to feel into you know your yourself and realizing that control that you have of your body you're working with your second chakra too right your sec and first mm -hmm. too in a way um, yeah exactly. yeah your root chakra mm -hmm. yeah your root chakra and your sacral chakra yeah mm -hmm. definitely and that's yeah, the second the chakra is the source of creativity right mm -hmm. yeah. right mm -hmm. So, yep, that's um, where all creativity comes from. So it's really important that um, that sacral chakra is balanced for that reason because it helps with your creativity. Yeah, I just know that because of my history with endo and how I really needed to tune into what my personal happiness is and what um, how I wanted to create my world rather than listening to everyone else and the conditioning and all that. Um, so mm -hmm. working with the blockages over the years and slowly unleashing my creative power, um, wow, what a painful process. <laughs> but it must be done. And so then, but it's an emotional process, a psychological process, 
And then I like this component of having the physical coming back down to the body once you do that because you can feel very ungrounded. So working to energize that chakra, and, and I feel a very much like a yin energy, like a like it feels like we're we're um, we're being very empowered and like kind of going out there, but it's doing it all by coming within first. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it can also be a yang as well too, depending upon right. the practice and the breath. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Depending on the breath. Okay. Yeah, different breath work. Yeah, but yeah, I totally, mm -hmm. I totally get what, what you're saying there because yeah, it is getting that empowerment from coming within. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. um, do you do you do the J deck practice at all in the red tent group? Yeah, we've actually done classes with it. Um, we've done um, we've done it in the in the red tent. We've had red tents where we've actually everybody gets a mirror before you, wow. you do your practice. Like, you have to look at yourself. Like, how many of us have actually sat there and just taken a moment and just admired her in, like, mm -hmm. the, the uniqueness and the nuances of her? You know, we're told not to look, let alone touch it. Um, so we really, we really connect with ourselves in, in the red tent. And we've also done, you know, yoni yoga. We've had some yoni yoga classes, too. As well, yeah. So it's it's a nice practice to um, um, to do a, a yoga practice, but a yoga practice that focuses on your pelvic floor. And we always do it with a light heartedness because you know there's times you're gonna lay your egg. <laughs> it happens, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Like you learn you learn really quickly how strong your pelvic muscles are and every day is going to be different i have some days where it's like really strong and i can do a full yoga practice focusing on my pelvic floor with my egg inside and then there are other days like i'll go down into a squat and there she is i just laid it like there went that practice like all right <laughs> you know that's where i am today you know every day is different you know we're unique and no two days are ever going to be the same yeah, it's, it's always um, really, really fun to uh, to watch our facial expressions as we do the the yoni yoga. I mean, you're fully closed, you know, the egg is in there, but it's just like no one from an outsider's perspective, you would look at the yoga session and think it's just a regular yoga session, but we're like really working those muscles. And but like you know, sometimes you know, as I'm in a spot, I'm like, oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> and and another like uh experience that you have is um going using the bathroom the first time with the egg because you can have the egg um, in and still you know pee. <laughs> but you learn like how to use it and it's it's um it's kind of like you again yeah you gotta like have fun with it too you know and we kind of like i remember i think the first time i did it it was actually at a yoga session and the girls were outside the door and i was like i did it and they're like cheering for <laughs> i've been in a practice with um with our teacher our instructor and um we did a power practice where um it's a weighted practice and all of a sudden we're all standing up in this room and there's my teacher who hung a flashlight from her vagina. <laughs> She's swinging it back and forth. Like, <laughs> you know, you have to have that light heartedness. And, and we always say, Hey, you're going to hear them fall. And if they fall, cheer them on. And that's exactly what we do. If you keep it in, we cheer you on. If it comes out, we're like, Oh, it happens to all of us, you know? <laughs> Every day is different, you know, like, yeah, that's how muscles well, work. Like, why not at the gynecologist, instead of using those really uncomfortable steel forcep things, why can't they make those out of, like, gemstones or something? I don't know. <laughs> or just some other material. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything. Yeah. Anything, anything else. But, 
What was what was that movie? That? Someone should. It was a man. It was a man that invented it. It was a man. And if you ever watched the movie, I think it was called Hysteria. Like men were so enthralled with a you know a woman's vulva and um, her clitoris that um, they developed this practice and it was like known as the tickler. Like like they thought they were gathering all this information about a woman and, and her clitoris and they thought they could control it. But little do they know, like your clitoris just isn't this tiny little button. It's this amazing structure that comes all down the lips. And um, they were just focusing on one little thing. There's so much more to it. You know, there's so much more to us. And that's a lot of what this practice brings to Like we work towards educating you so that you understand you and how you work. Like this is your body. You're, you're in it. You, you get one this lifetime. So it's really important that you understand it and how it works and learn to love it and embrace it for all that it is. Yeah, we're never really given, um, like, a health class really about our, I mean, you're given the basic anatomy, but about a real anatomy, like, the actual anatomy of you, like, in your part, like, like, I never knew that about the, the clitoris, like, I never knew that it was, you know, a whole, it's, we have pictures, too, like, because <laughs> once you get the visual, like, it's like, you're just dumbfounded that you never realized. Yeah. And how many of us realize how unique, um, you know, a vulva is? And um, that's how we opened up our classes. We we spent a half an hour of video of flashing vulvas. <laughs> and oh, wow. you really see the beauty of them, like they're all so different, they're all so mm -hmm. unique. And I mean, yeah. how many women in the tent have asked me, "Am I normal? Like this is this is this is what my vagina is like. Is it, am I normal? Like we're afraid to ask, we're afraid to talk about these things, and it's really important that these things are addressed and talked about and discussed. Like we're all there is. I think the only thing that's abnormal is the word abnormal. There isn't such a thing. You know, we just are as we are, and we're beautiful. Some of us have, you know, labia, one shorter than the other. Some of our labia is, we. that's the first thing we see is the labia. For others, the labia is very tiny. And, I mean, we're just all so unique, you know, all so unique. So it's about embracing that. Well, the Red Tent does some great work. Um, I've been there a couple of times to talk about astrology, and you also incorporate spirituality um, in your work. And one time we were there, we worked with oracle ca cards. I think it was a goddess cards, goddess oracle. Yeah. And it was just like so, it was, it was very grounding. And you're in a safe space for sure. Thank you so much for for all the work you do. Anything else you'd like to share? Just just thoughts about um, really uh, just uh, if if you're looking for more ways to to connect with yourself spiritually, emotionally, um, internally, you know any you know just mind body whatever like. Really just starting within and doing practices and learning, even just learning about practices, uh, different forms of practices. And there's a lot of times where something will be introduced and like the jade eggs and, and I'll be like, ex like I was excited about it at first and then kind of shied away. And some people are the opposite where they, they shy away at first and then they get excited about it. And um, to just keep a, an open heart to them because sometimes it's the strangest sounding things that can be the most impactful. Yeah. I, I know I always say 
I always say that if it sounds weird or sounds odd or you stop for a moment, like if it makes you stop, then that means your body wants to listen. It wants to listen. Mm-hmm. Take note. You know, it's it's a it's a connection for you. And 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 I also think you know the probably the last thing that I I would like to add to this is you know, the importance of women's gatherings. Like, this is so important, and they're happening. We just have to look for them. Like, each gather, there's a gathering in almost every community out there that are we willing to step out of our comfort zone and investigate them. Mm -hmm. And to be able to step out of our comfort zone and say, well, maybe this one doesn't have what I need right now, but there's this one over here. I'm going to try this one. You know, um, it's amazing. Like each facilitator has something completely unique to add because it's unique to them. And you're going to be drawn to uh, whatever facilitator is connecting with your needs. It's it's really it's really beautiful. So you know the importance of seeking out in your community. There are women mm-hmm. that want this, and if you don't have one in your community, create one. You know, and, and if you need help in that, you know, shoot us a message. You know, let us know. We we can help you to start one as well. It's really really important that we connect in each and every one of our communities. So then we can start connecting like all over the world. We've had tents at our particular tent, and um, we had a tent from um, um, Malaysia come in and Skype in with us. Like it's really beautiful. When we had um, one the other night, there was people from Ohio, from Philadelphia, another woman from Florida. So it's, it's really nice. It's so, so important to connect. So connect in your smaller communities and then keep connecting out. Very important. Yeah, when I first found the red tent, I um, I was just searching. I was searching for connection, um, for people to share, and I, I believe it was a solstice. I, I really wanted to celebrate the solstice and wanted to connect more with my spirituality and myself, and didn't know. I was just lost, and I was just searching, literally on Facebook for events, and found the red tent. And it, it was like one of those things where, um, okay, this sounds good. And then I went, and I was just really taken back by by it all. And I came with a friend, and she was like, "That was weird. I, I you know, I'm, I don't think I'm going back." And I was like, "I'm." <laughs> and it was great for me because it was at a time where I didn't really do things by myself too, like that much, like not like something like that, um, and where. I, you know, to go to an event with women I, you know, I didn't know at the time, but I was just so drawn to it. And now it's just, I'm trying so much more things. So, yeah, not to be afraid of something if if you're, you know, if it sounds strange, if you're drawn to it, you're drawn to it. I think it's such an amazing group. Um, I mean, also taking an ancient practice where women gather together during when they're on the new moon, when they're originally menstruating. That, to me, is something I feel like I could only dream of happening years ago, and now it's actually mm-hmm. happening. But thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle and Carla. Um, thank you. For sharing oh, thank you for having us. And your site, soul to soul michellecom S-O-U-L. P-G-H. Yeah. You're probably thinking of my email. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's just go to soulpgh.com. Soulpgh.com. Soul Great. Yes. And we can also get the jade eggs from your website. You have yeah. a link there. Okay. Yeah, we have a link right there. Okay. Yeah, and there's there's some information on the red tent as well too. Um, a lot of information there, and you know, we always post when our next tent is, so all that information will be up for everyone. Yeah. And if you have any okay, questions, thanks. you know, there's a contact as well. Well, you ladies have a good evening. Thank you. You as well. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Sure. We really enjoyed it. It was a great evening. <laughs>